Kreuzerpau, welcome everybody. And today I am going to talk to you about what I'm up to in the garden the end of January. So I'm Selena Walker, I'm a naturopath, nutritionist and herbalist. And Kreuzer e Asprid Akoid, welcome to Asprid Akoid, my home. And those of you that follow me know that I try and grow as much food for us and as many herbs as possible for our own use at home and for my herbal apothecary for my one-to-one -one clients. So what I'm hoping to do this year is to add a bit of extra information to my YouTube channel and take you through each month. Generally what I'm doing, probably not everything, because I sometimes forget the camera. But I thought I would start because it's that exciting time of year where I can start planting seeds. So we're at the end of January here. And at the end of January, I always like to plant certain seeds. So I'm going to do that while chatting to you about a certain, certain things as we go along. So lots of things I'm planting today I will actually be planting in these trays with a lid on and then taking it up to my house to have in front of the wood burner to have some heat and it will get indirect sunlight but it should be fine. Now I know some of you might be screaming at me that you need lights and all that kind of things but uh, what I've learned I have been growing vegetables really since I was a kid and my dad showed me in a very very small terrace garden in the South Wales Valleys and what I've learned is don't follow books. Know your patch, speak to people in the community that have been growing for generations and do it from trial and error. And I've been doing it like this for years and it always works. So I'm simply going to add some compost. Now in here, I've got some shop-bought compost, but for bigger seeds, I will be using my homegrown compost, which is very exciting this year because this year I've got a load of homegrown compost and again with a compost heap I don't follow books the inner rebel of being from South Wales Valleys is definitely coming out <laughs> but I don't follow books I don't have massive rules I don't lay it up I don't even turn it all I simply do is in May I cover the previous year's compost heap just with plastic but with non-porous plastic so the rain can't get through. Now here in Wales I don't have to worry about it ever drying out and actually what I need to worry about is more rain getting in because it will just be swampy and that's more of a problem than getting the right balance of greens and browns. I put the plastic on top and I forget about it till well we've just uncovered it and so I forget about it till January and I've made two amazing new beds here in the polytunnel and there's loads of compost for me to add as top bed in here in the polytunnel because I don't use wood chip in here because it's too dry and there'll be plenty for me to use for seed compost. So at the moment for small seeds because I've still got some of my local compost that I buy I'm going to use that to start with but then I am going to mainly this year be using my own compost and I'm very excited about it. So what am I planting here? Well I've got onions I've got peppers, sweet and spicy, and other things that will be planted for going indoors once they're in are my tomatoes and ashwagandha. So I'll talk you through them all as I'm going along. I've got my little tool belt. I love this tool belt that my partner got for me for my birthday because in here I can keep all my bits and bobs and I've got lollipop sticks, lots of them. These are my favourite because they can simply be composted down and you can get a couple of uses out of them throughout the year. Oh, I'm just checking. My microphone's uh, gone in, so hopefully the sound is okay on that. And I'm looking for my pen. So great pen to use. Oh, I use Sharpies or any permanent pen, but I like a fine tip. So all I'm simply going to do now is I'm going to start to make indentations in the soil. Now with the onions, I've got onion stir on, shallots, round onion, onion robilia, and onion high bound. Now, I've probably pronounced most of those wrong. As you know, I'm not great at pronouncing things. Um, in English, I can do a bit better. In Welsh, I can do a bit better. But anything that's slightly long or slightly strange, my mouth doesn't get around. So because onions need a long season, I prefer growing them from seed because I just love growing from seed. I never ever grow tired of seeing that first shoot coming above the ground and my little plant babies coming to say hello. 
So I'm going to plant a variety of these. Now, we don't eat that much onions here. And we don't eat many onions because if we eat too much, they affect our digestive system. So I'm only growing a few because it's nice to pickle some onions. It's nice to have some onions and for things like making fire cider. So I'm going to get on with planting the first tray up. So I've done my labels. What I tend to do is cut the lollipops in half because if you do a full lollipop stick, the lid can't get on great. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do little wells. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two three, four, five, and I'll leave a bit of space on the end for something else. So very first thing is I'm just going to water it. There we go. Leave that soaking. And you might need to just emphasize some of those wells. Now it's going to depend on the size of the seed, how deep I do those little wells. You generally want to do your seed around twice the depth of the actual seed. So I'm going to do stir on shallots. Do I want a shallot a lot? <laughs> Round onion, liliria, and then going to do lobelia and high bound. And just in case all things go pear shaped, I've just got an onions one to put in the end. So I know that's my mainly my onion bed. So I'm going to open up these and put them in. And this is where the exciting thing starts. So I'm just going to sprinkle them along. As I said, I don't want too many, but it's nice to have a good few. So I'm probably got there about 30 of each variety. So it's a really quick, easy job this is. Particularly in January, because there's not that much to plant and you're very excited about the new growing season. Now the hardest thing about doing onion seeds is if you drop any, you can't see them amongst the soil because it's black. Putting the round onion in now. So these seeds, I generally buy my seed from real seeds, which are the white packets, or Tamar Organics. So the brown packets are uh, Tamar Organics and the white packets are Real Seed. Now Real Seed are great, they're a local company to me, they're based in West Wales and they really encourage you to save your own seed and there's some interesting varieties and that's why I tend to use those. And Tamar Organics are great because they do large supplies, so you can buy giant packets such as these size, which I got my broad beans for more commercial size growers, but sometimes I grow in bulkier certain varieties so that's great and they do the, a lot of the generic varieties and by that what can be good is they're the varieties that you know are going to work so because i'm growing here for our food i want to make sure that they do work and then the last one high bound now i generally don't save my onion seed it's just not when i got round the one year i did but that was by accident and i didn't save it because I didn't isolate it and it might have crossed with some other allium families that I had going on in the garden. And that's it. That's my onions planted. So that's my onions done for the year. How amazing is that? So onions done. All I'll simply do now is two fingers, bring it in to just put a bit of soil around it. And it's that easy. There we go. And it's so good to feel the soil on your hands. It's getting to that time of year again, which is very exciting. Love having dirt on my hands. So there's a bit of room at the end. So I'm going to put some of the ashwagandha in. Now, ashwagandha is an Ayurvedic herb. It grows in India, but it grows so quick. You can grow it here in Wales as an annual. So I've got some in my polytunnel and I dig the roots up from any time from December onwards, really. Um, first frost, it will actually die back, the tops will, but the roots are deliciously fresh under the ground. Now, they need a long season, that is the thing about them. So I generally give them the same amount of time that I give my chilies, and that's another thing I'm planting today. Now, they will self-seed because the little berries will drop and they'll self-seed, but it's good to save your own as well. So this is a mixture of ones I've bought and ones of my own. And these ones I get from Pointsfields Herb Nursery, which is based in Scotland. 
So I love using them for a lot of my herb seed. So I'm going to put that right on the end on its own so it's separate from the onions. And these are part of the nightshade family. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to put a few in because sometimes, depending on the seed, they can be a bit erratic with germination. And there's not many people that grow them, so I always find there's plenty of people willing <laughs> to have an ashwagandha plant. And again, that's my ashwagandha planted for the year. I just love how easy this is. Right, the hardest part is remembering where I put the pen. So breaking my lollipop stick in half, ashwagandha. There we go. And it's lovely doing this in the polytunnel with you guys, because I feel like you're here with me and I'm not on my own. So there we go, that's ready to go up the house. Lid on, keep the moisture in, keep the heat in, and that's the onions and ashwagandha done. Next, I want to concentrate on my tomatoes and my peppers. So filling up the compost time. never grows tiring <laughs> okay so now for my peppers I've got sweet and I'm mainly growing this year early jalapenos and I've got two varieties of peppers sweet peppers I've got the Asti Rosso which I grew last year and was really successful and for California Wonder these two were great now last year in the polytunnel I had around about 10 plants and we were inundated with peppers. They were so abundant and it wasn't actually a, a massively great summer, but it was just an ideal growing environment in here and the, the skin's still relatively clean, although it lives on the list of things to do this year to clean it. So there's plenty of light in here, even on the darker days, and it keeps the heat in. We were practically having peppers every day right up until the end of September. In fact, my partner was saying, it's pepper season over yet. He had a complete guts full of them. I am going to get one more variety of pepper. Let me just pour some water on there. Moisten the soil. Because I want to try and get variety that's about as spicy as jalapeno, but thinner and longer, so it'll dry quicker. Because I like to dry my peppers for long storage and the jalapenos take a long time to dry. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just wondering, do I want to squeeze those up tighter so I can fit in the tomatoes? Hmm. No, I'll leave it and I can get another tray for the tomatoes. Yeah, so if you know of a pepper plant, a hot pepper plant, around the same spice level as jalapeno, that's um, thin-skinned, long, so it would be easy to dry, then I'd love for you to let me know in the comments so I can plant that and it will easily dry out. Now, the early jalapeno I find is absolutely brilliant because of that key title, early. Really gets the jalapenos going early, <laughs> clue in the title, so it means that I've got a longer season of chilli peppers. And I'm planting now because they do need a long season. So as I said, what I'll be doing with these is these will be going next to my wood burner. Once they have germinated, I won't let them go too leggy in the house. I'll then pot them on and they'll go on the windowsills in the house. Then once they big enough to be off the windowsills they will come down here and they go in the cloches in the polytunnel and on cold nights they have fleece over them and then when they've outgrown the cloches they go into the beds. so you can see there's quite a long process before they're into the beds and that's why i can afford to plant them really early because i'm not too bothered about frosts because i have a plan <laughs> so there we go in fact i might fit the tomatoes in here because I mistook that for more peppers, but they're all, they're all the same variety. Let's have a look how many tomatoes I've got. I'm planting Amish paste, banana vine, so that's another vine tomato, 
and cherry vine and tomato parzano and vine cherry tomato ecstasy so i've got one two three four five am i going to fit five in there let's give it a go is it let's give it a go one flatten those out two three four i reckon i can do it yes i'm going to do it i'm going to do it so let's start up here one there we go that will fit in that will fit in so let's get these in so i got jalapeno peppers here i'm going to put a few from each packet now i'm aiming let's think i'm aiming to get out of the sweet peppers i'm going to want to plant at least 10 so i'm probably going to plant 15 seeds in just to double check because i hate it when you you've got really one chance with these seeds because they take so long and they don't all germinate and then you have the other issue is they all germinate and then i'm i don't want to not allow them to live out their destiny and i'm looking for homes for them then but there's always someone that wants them so i think what i'll do because with the jalapenos i'm probably going to put i usually put five in a row and i've got two rows there of the chili peppers so i'm probably going to want about eight of these so i'm going to put in 14 seeds two three five six seven eight but i'm going to do some from different packets just to help with germination and there's another packet here another company that i use is vital seeds so that's another company that is really good for organic seed. I think that's it in that packet. Oh, no. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. Because also I'm going to be getting another variety, so I want to make sure I've got room for those. So that's those done the sweet peppers now next again i'm going to be aiming to get about 10 plants out and i've got two varieties here so i'm going to put 14 of each and then we'll see what happens now i do find with these they take a long time to germinate one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12 13 14 and why i'm saying that is because sometimes i'm like oh they're not going to germinate but i sometimes find if you haven't given them quite enough heat they won't germinate so i usually put them somewhere warmer but i figured out that the best place is right next to my wood burner and just make sure that i water them plenty because obviously it's very warm there so the california uh, wonder goes in i wouldn't say california poppies then <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, fifteen. Oh, that's it to that packet. Don't get as many with those ones. <laughs> so let me pop that in there because I know that is empty. Brilliant. So that's the peppers done. So now I want to get some labels for the tomatoes. So we've got the Amish, uh, that's the garden ecstasy, which are cherry tomatoes, the Irish cherry vine tomatoes, and then the others are all larger tomatoes because my main reason for growing tomatoes is to be self-sufficient in tin tomatoes, so I can a load of them. And also make salsa, which is delicious, uh, with pasta sauces and a nice easy meal. So I've got the Gardener's Delight, Irish, Irish Gardener's Delight. Now, a couple of years ago, I grew a couple of different varieties of cherry tomatoes. And naughty me didn't keep replacing the label, so I lost track of which is which. And there was one absolutely delicious cherry tomato, and it's between these two. So this year, I'm going to make sure my labels are good all year so I can figure out which one it is because I generally save my tomato seed that is why that's what I saved last year my Amish paste now this year I'm experimenting with different plum tomatoes just so I can figure out which ones are the best for abundance really so I grow three beds of tomatoes 
cherry tomatoes I generally grow for salads, but this year I've extended in the polytunnel, so I'm quite tempted to go three beds of plum tomatoes, seven in a row, I do three rows in each one, so that's 21 per bed, so that's 21, 42, 63 to plants of these. So if I do 21 of each, then that's a good plan. But again, I wouldn't just be planting 21, I'll probably plant 26 and see what happens. Amish paste. Amish paste is what I've been growing the last couple of years and it is a brilliant tomato, absolutely brilliant. But it does sometimes get hard tops and sometimes can get uh, rot at the bottom. So I want to experiment with different ones to see how they are. So what one is this? This is the banana vine. And then the last one I'm experimenting with here is the Pazona. So if, if you guys have experimented with any of these, please let me know how you've got on because it's always good to hear someone else's experience. But as I always say, don't go, just go on other people's experience. Try things out yourself because everything is different, including your soil, where you are and your situation. So we've got Irish gardeners. Like, I have a feeling this is the one from the description. I think this is the one, but I shall soon find out and let you all know. So because these are just for salads and for the joy of eating in the summer, or oh, the taste when you get a fresh cherry tomato that's warm because it's so hot in here and you pop it in your mouth. It's like sweeties. Who needs sweeties when you've got cherry tomatoes growing in the polytunnel? And last year, I think I grew three, six, I think I grew nine cherry tomatoes and it was probably a bit too much. So I'm going to plant six of each of these because that one then will then be... 12 so that means I will definitely get nine do I want to do that mount I'm gonna do five of each five of each there we go so the Irish one two three four five but because I definitely want five I'm gonna do another two for luck are you like me? Let me know in the comments when you were planting. Another two for luck. And then you end up with a load more than what you actually needed. Ooh, dropped one then. There we go. That's the Irish Gardener's Delight. The ecstasy ones. I mean, they sound pretty good as well. And I think they were described as even better than the Gardener's Delight. So I might be sold on these ones. But who knows? I might like them both and I can always grow them both. So again, I'm going to do the same five and two for luck. <laughs> oh, I can't get into this packet. It doesn't want me to get in. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. One. There we go. Now the main thing when you're planting in trays like this is when you're watering, don't over water because what can happen is the seeds can fly downhill and then you don't know what you're getting because they're not by the labels. And now we come on to the last load that need to go up to the house and that is my tomatoes. So I've got my Amish paste and I said I was going for 21 of each variety so I'm going to plant 25. So these are going to be quite tightly planted, but it doesn't matter because they're only going to be in here until the first leaves form, so until they're about this big. So they're not going to be overcrowded for too long. Now these are my own home saved ones. So it's always lovely when you do your own home ones. One, two, three. They're a bit, not sticky, but stuck together because the way I save them on the kitchen towel, they sometimes are hard to separate then. One, two, three, four, which is a clump, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, put some down the bottom, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 5. I mean, I'm not too bothered about the clumps because, as you can see, I have an abundance of them. 
Amish paste. And then what's next? The banana vine. So these are a new variety that I'm trying out. And it says on these to help avoid blight and shelter foliage from rain. So that's why I like planting these in the polytunnel. And they're an incredibly productive plum type, making loads of large orange fruit. So it'd be nice to have a different colour going on as well. I'm not sure how many seeds are actually in these packets. So it might depend how many's in there. On might have to adjust varieties. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pop that on there. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So there's 22 in there. It's almost like I planned it, isn't it? Maybe I did. Maybe I'm actually sat there and planned this all out <laughs> when I done my order. And then we've got the last one, which is Posana, and there's 25 in here. So I'm just going to plant the whole packet. There we go. And we shall see how this year's tomato season goes then. It's very exciting. In fact, we're still eating last year's tomatoes in our stored canned tomatoes so we'll see how far we get i'm aiming one year to get get up to the point where i'm harvesting fresh because in the summer we use fresh in all our sauces and then i start once once they're productive i then start canning them so i think this year i think i'm not sure i mean there might even be a video about it so you might know better than me but i think i've done four no 50 sorry jars and a, a few couple of jars of salsa and we've got, we've definitely got at least another month, possibly another two months left, but I don't think it's going to quite take us up to the first harvest, which is usually around the end of June. So yeah, that's why I'm doing an extra bed this year. So two fingers, night, night to the seeds, no star, as we say here in Wales. Sleep well, see you soon. And then it's the exciting waiting then. For them to come up and say hello and I don't know if you were like me let me know in the comments whether I'm the only mad one that squeals with excitement even after years of growing when they do appear and lid on and that's another variety full tray ready to go in front of the wood burner so another job is planting my broad beans. Broad bean seeds are quite large. So I'm now going to fill up some trays for beans and for some sweet peas because who can't resist sweet peas from my compost heap. So that's compost that I've made from the plants, the weeds and the land. And it's going back into making more food for us. So very exciting. The potatoes have arrived and I like to when they arrive around the end of January just to get them straight out ready to chit which is a funny word isn't it but basically what it means it means i can expose them to some light so they start to grow their shoots and then i will be planting some of these actually there <laughs> in a bed in the polytunnel and then some outside they worked really well in the polytunnel last year so i'm definitely doing that again so these have come from uh Tama organics and what i'm going to do now I used to, when I was doing small amounts, I would use egg boxes, but because of the variety, the amount that I'm doing, um, it would take a while for my partner to eat that amount of eggs to get through it. So I'm using these mushroom crates, which I reuse from my local organic farm shop. So I'm going to get cracking with these and probably I've got how many varieties? I've got two varieties. So I've got Colleen and what's the other variety I ordered? Maris Bard. And I've got two, one and a half kilos of each. So I shall see whether I need one or two trays each. And then these will be going up the house, much to my partner's annoyance, and sitting next to our dining table until they're ready to come out in here, which I'll be planting the first load in here a bit early. And I've got other videos on potato planting that you can check out if you want a bit more information about what I get up to there. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to plant a few herbs. The last of the 
seed compost because some of the herbs I'm planting are quite small. So I, I want to make sure that the compost reflects that. Not too chunky. So not my homemade compost. At the moment, anyway, that's the last bag of seed compost that I bought in. I might get a sieve and see how difficult that is. <laughs> Not so much difficult, but time consuming. Okay, so I've got Echinacea, I've got Sweet Sicily, and I've got Monk's Hood. Now, Monk's Hood, um, a Wolfsbane or uh, Aconite Napaleas, depending on what you want to say, know me with the Latin names. I know this as Wolfsbane. It's a great woodland plant. So I'm planting that amongst my herbs, even though it's toxic. But I love having wolfsbane around, so um, I find wolfsbane just connects me in with the old wise women of Wales. <laughs> and then I've got echinacea. Now, I like planting echinacea around this time because it tends to have a bit of a cold spell and it helps it get going. I also sometimes plant some in autumn to see what does best. And sweet Sicily. Again, this can be planted in autumn, but I tend to plant them this time a bit in autumn and sometimes a bit in spring, just to kind of edge my bets really because it's all going to be dependent on the weather okay so i need three sticks and then we can get started brilliant and there's one there so first up i think it has to be wolfsbane now, obviously, I'm really good at the, uh, well, not blowing my own trumpet, but I know how to identify them. So there's no way I'm going to get these muddled up. If you're unsure about identification and you're planting toxic plants, then it's best to plant them on their own. There we go. So my three are ready. So let's start with echinacea in the middle. I got these from Tamar Organics, as you can see. And the seed is medium size. So I'm just going to pop it down there. And I'm going to sprinkle quite a few in. And I'm going to put another row there. Sprinkle another few in. And I think I'll do another row here as well because I haven't been that successful with germination rate of this echinacea, so I'm going to hedge my bets and plant way more than I need, so then I'm not going to have any issues. Hopefully they'll all come up, because it'd be lovely to have a load of echinacea around the place. Now it doesn't matter that they're quite tightly packed, because this is just a seed tray, so as soon as they come up, I will then make sure that they are potted on quite quickly. Bit of water to water them in. Now I should have done that before because this is what happens. So what I'm going to do is just put them back in place. So they're in that space. And then I'm going to add some compost on top. But the rest of it is now nice and watered, so I don't have to do that. There we go. Bit of compost on top solves it. This is what happens when I try to multitask and film and do this at the same time. <laughs> okay, so doing what I normally do, it's nice and wet now. So my normal routine is wet it first and then plant. So it's good that I'm showing you my, my mistakes because you might remember then. So let's go for the Sweet Sicily next. So I'm just doing one row of Sweet Sicily and one row of Wolfsbane. Now the Sweet Sicily seed is quite large, as you can see. They're like pods with seeds in. So I'm just going to lay those in the little trench I've created that's wet <laughs> after my bit of echinacea disaster. 
But you know, it's good to see things that are real, isn't it? So many things these days on YouTube and Instagram aren't real. And I just keep in my mistakes. I'm sure you've seen that before. You've seen, if you've watched my videos before, you might even come across the video where I was working a mugwort uh, stick and I had a worm inside it and I had to undo it all, but I kept it in the video. There we go. Because I think it's good to keep things real. We all make mistakes and we're not all perfect because that's part of the human experience. And now we've got the monkshood. So I got these from Nikki's Nursery. Absolutely no affiliated with any of these uh, seed companies. It's just letting you know, so in case you want to buy them. And you can see these, you might be able to see in there, are quite small. So I'm just going to pop those in. And then if you're, if you're a bit apprehensive because the seeds are toxic, you can use these bags that come with it and just tap it along. Just have to make sure that you get them all out. There we go. And if any get outside of the trench and you're worried about contamination with others, if you're not sure of identification, as I said, you're best planting these guys on their own. And that's the herbs planted. So in this tray, I've planted my very, very precious slippery elm seed, which I got from Strictly Medicinal Seeds, but it was a bit of a rigmarole because Strictly Medicinal Seeds no longer post to Wales, the UK. So I had to get a friend to get them posted to Ireland, and then I had to get my friend to post them on to me. Uh, and then I've planted some sweet peas because who doesn't love sweet peas? So the slippery elm, I would absolutely love to get some slippery elm trees here. And it's really difficult to get a hold of slippery elm. And also because of elm disease, you have to make sure that you keep them below a certain height because I think it's around eight metres they start to get... Um, they start to, or maybe eight foot, I probably remember that wrong, eight metres is quite tall, isn't it? But you need to pollard them anyway to keep them quite low and that can help stop them getting elm disease. Now, the native witch elm I have also planted here because witch elm is more of the native variety and there's old records of them using witch elm in a very similar way to slippery elm. But I wanted to get slippery elm because it may be um, slippery elm deals with different climates better. And then, as I said, I've planted some sweet peas here, purely for beauty and smell because we have to have some joy in our life don't we and whilst all the herbs and all the vegetables bring me joy there's nothing like the smell of sweet peas to say the new growing season has arrived well as I stand here by my two beds that I've created this year which is very exciting from our own homegrown compost that concludes all the jobs that I generally do at the end of January beginning of February and very soon I'll be cracking on with February's jobs and I'll bring you along for the ride there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing them as I said throughout the year and they won't always be exactly the same. It's going to depend on what I'm up to, who I'm, do who I'm doing things with. But if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me push this information out there because I really want the people to be growing foraging and creating their own medicine and food because here at Aspiridicoid we grow the majority of our own food for me and my partner to consume what we can anyway in this climate and I grow around 85% of the herbs that I use in my apothecary for my clients, for my students and obviously for myself as well and my partner's use. So I'd really like it if you could subscribe and come along on this journey with me and if you'd like more information and to connect even more then head on over to my website selinawalker.earth and subscribe to my free newsletter so diolch am gwilio thank you for watching i'll see you soon